All right, thank you for joining us one uh, you know today online. Um, I'm sure whichever service you are attending, thank you for all of you who are at different homes, different places. Um, first service, second service, nursing campus. Um, irrespective of which campus do you attend, um, this now made us one church now, um, and uh, we are one body meeting at different places uh, as families and as friends and colleagues together. And some of you may be alone at this point of time, but I want you to know that God is with you, um, and you know He's He's with you. He's, he wants to talk to you this morning. And it's a good thing for us uh, to to worship God together like this. So um, and now I want to praise God for our worship team, our production team that has put together this this uh, this morning service. Pause that they made it possible. Uh, so just take a moment to praise God for them. All right, God bless them um, for the worship the worship team, the production team, and that made this um, today possible. I'm glad I'm 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 joined with. Uh, um, Brother Nelson, uh, sorry, <laughs> Brother Selvin, <laughs> Selvin, this this morning in our service, uh, you know, just just be with me. I thought I I don't want to be alone on stage, so I just thought it'll be nice to have Selvin uh, on my side playing the keys. Um, so just to build up that momentum for us uh, to, you know, to sit quietly and receive the word of God. We're in the middle of a series called Napkin Dreams. For those of you who are tuning in the first time to our online services, uh, my name is Chaitanya. I pastor this church called Capstone. We now have become the online church uh, for the next few weeks. We will be an online church and we, you know, if, if whenever, if at all God wants to lift up the lockdown, then we would probably have a physical location where we will meet. Uh, but for now, we are a virtual church and thank you for joining us wherever, whichever part of the world you are in. Just say hi on our uh, Facebook comments page and uh, ping where you're from. Uh, it, it would really encourage our hearts and our spirits. By the way, those of you who are from Capstone, make sure you share this page, share this link, uh, put a like, uh, put a love, uh, share it on your page, you know, and many of your friends may actually get to watch this live service and who knows, God may speak to them today um, at, during this service, all right? God God bless you for, um, for uh, this morning. Thank God for this opportunity this morning. Um, so Napkin Dream, we're in the middle of a series called Napkin Dream. We've been, we've been studying the life uh, of Joseph, the journey of Joseph's life, and have seen how uh, God has used this uh, young boy with, you know, a boy full of dreams uh, to accomplish his will um, in this world, uh, God's will in this world through this boy's life, and how through different twists and turns of his life, God through this journey taught, shaped Joseph's life, um, taught him many things in the course of time that that kind of helped him to become a person who brought healing not only to his family but to uh, to, uh, to an entire nation uh, unto the world uh, so Joseph's life is a great example for us to learn from how to dream big and how do you see those dreams come into fulfillment through Joseph's life's journey we've been learning few steps that um, that we need to follow in order to see our dream to come into fulfillment. Some of you may be uh, having a question about what does napkin dream mean? Uh, well, the, the whole idea, the series title had come out from this idea that if, if I give you a napkin, if we give you a napkin, a uh, paper napkin, by the way, um, and ask you to draw or write down what is that dream that you have for your life? Or what is the dream that God gave you for your life? Would you be able to write it? Would you be able to draw it? Uh, base, that is the question on the basis of which this series began. Um, if you have a dream, um, this is a great series to learn on how to see that dream come into fulfillment. If you don't have a dream, this is a great series also to listen and get a dream for your life. God loves you. God has a dream for your life. You see, God is good. Um, that is one thing that we have learned over the last few weeks, that God is absolutely good. He's absolutely in control of everything. He's good regardless of how bad things get in our lives. He's, he remains good. He doesn't change. He doesn't change like a shifting shadow, Bible says. So uh, God is not just good. He's the author of good. And so only... Mm, only God can do good and whatever he does is best for us and so that's what we have learned looking at Joseph's life um, in fact 
God has a dream for your life. He wants to give you that dream. He wants to use that dream that he gives you in order to bring healing not only to you, to your family and to the world that God is going to place you in. All right, so we believe that each one of us are born with a purpose and God wants to fulfill that purpose through your life. Looking at Joseph's life, this this favorite son of a favorite wife of of a of a man called Jacob, um how this boy right from the beginning of his life itself he began to dream big dreams. He had two dreams. Uh in both dreams he saw his brothers and his family members bowing down to him. And so he um he thought he's going to get he's going to get to be awesome guy. He's going to be somebody who is a big shot. Um on the top of that his father gave him a beautiful mm, a robe of many colors that's what bible says um, you know bible describes that as a robe of many colors and as he looked at that robe he he you know the um he 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 his he began to feel um, proud of who he is and he it began to show in his actions and in his, you know in the way that he is dealing with his brothers and his brothers hated him so the one day when they got a chance they caught him alone and they wanted to kill him Uh, but then they changed their mind put him into a pit and finally they sold him as a slave uh, to to ishmaelite traders who were passing by that desert so these ishmaelite traders picked up joseph and took him all the way to egypt and then sold him as a slave to uh, an egyptian official called potiphar so joseph ends up from being a favorite son of a father to become a slave of of somebody from a strange country in a strange culture this hebrew boy with no background of egyptian culture ends up in that culture as a servant boy so there he grows up he serves his best he gives his best in that home potiphar sees that joseph serves really well so he begins to give him promotions and as he begin to grow um he um he does his job much better he does his, and and gets a promotion and he does his job much better and then potiphar sees that whatever joseph is given he's doing a good job and he's in fact bringing profits back into his home so he decides well let me just promote him to the topmost position um of his house sold everything potiphar owned everything in his household his estate everything was put in uh, you know put under the charge of joseph joseph for starting from a hebrew slave boy he has now become the ceo of potiphar's household and estate uh, that's how uh, high joseph had gone and while he was there and finally when things started looking little better potiphar's wife began to eye on Joseph. Joseph was a handsome guy. So she wanted to sleep with him. So she asked him, "Can you commit adultery with me?" Well, not exactly those words. Basically, she said, "Can you come and sleep with me?" And Joseph knew it was adultery. He didn't want to do that because he knew if he sleeps with her, even though nobody's going to question him, he's if he sleeps with her, he's going to hurt his character. He knows he hurts himself. He's going to hurt Potiphar, who put so much trust in him. in you know in uh, in making him the charge of his entire household and ultimately he will end up hurting god if he sleeps with her and commits adultery so he decides not to do that not to bend to the temptation he decides to run away from her and one day while he was running away from her um, she caught hold of his cloak which remained in her hand when the husband came back she blamed joseph by saying she accused joseph by saying joseph tried to rape her and potiphar got really angry even though it was a false accusation but Tifer of course believes his wife throws Joseph into jail life suddenly took another turn um, and Joseph went back to same old space, back to square one kind of situation where he's 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 again all alone left with nothing facing injustice he doesn't know what to do even though he was in the prison he still remains faithful he still remains um uh, faithful to his character so he does his job well even in the prison so good he was in his doing his job the warden of the prison decides let me give responsibility to this joseph and joseph begins to grow even in the prison and starts taking care of the entire prison that's how much the warden uh, believed joseph so joseph um again um even though he's a prisoner he's still taking care of the uh, you know the prison entire prison um hold and and the prisoners inside uh meanwhile while joseph was there two prisoners from pharaoh's palace um pharaoh's palace um have been thrown there a baker and a cupbearer of 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 the pharaoh 
I don't know what they have done to Pharaoh. Pharaoh got angry with them. They, he threw both of them into jail. Uh, so they both end up in the same prison. So the prison warden asks uh, Joseph um, to take care of both of them. And so Joseph again became uh, responsible for those two um, officials who are now in the prison, in this white collar prison. Uh, while Joseph was there, one day Joseph saw that the both of them are sad. He goes to them and asks them, why are, you, why are you guys sad? They tell him their dreams. They got a dream. Um, both of them had one one dream, each of them, uh, in the night. And they are really worried about those dreams. So Joseph uh, begins to pay attention to them and ask them, can you recall your dream? And I want to take a moment to explain that. I want to ask God to give you an explanation of that. So they both tell um, the dreams that they both had. Joseph listens to both of them, listens to the cupbearer, listens to the baker. He looks at the uh, looks at the cupbearer and says, uh, this is what your dream meant. Uh, this is what your dream mean. In few days from now, the king uh, is going to look at you with a favor. He's going to take you out of this prison and make you take you back into the palace. He looks at the baker and he says, your dream, the dream that you have, actually means that king in few days is going to kill you, he's going to impale you and throw you as a food to you know the birds in the sky and that's exactly what happens few days later uh, the baker is picked up he was thrown um, to die and then of course the cupbearer was restored back to his position when the cupbearer was leaving the prisoner prison joseph looks at him and says hell um you know i'm uh, falsely accused and unjustly put into this prison would you please take this moment take uh, an opportunity to help me when you go to pharaoh speak about me tell some kind words about me so that pharaoh can take me out of the prison so finally when the cupbearer was going out joseph thought his life now may see some hope some change so he was hoping just to be free out of this prison maybe hoping that he would get back to home that that's where we ended up last week we talked about few things that we learn on his journey um, if some of you have missed up missed this series um, you, you may want to go go to our youtube channel on uh, at capstone church youtube channel just click on that um, look for capstone hyd and then you will see our um, you know you will find our channel um, subscribe to it yeah, you will see the series and you can go back and begin to look at all those um, steps that we talked about um, but so here is here is joseph his high his hopes are high now he is hoping that he would be released out of the prison and uh, he hoped that this cup bearer um, you know after being helped by him would remember him he and you know somehow goes to pharaoh and tells him that um, can you, you know, there is this Hebrew prisoner called Joseph. He was unjustly put there and maybe Pharaoh would then show kindness and release him. But here is how that story ends. In chapter 40, verses 23, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer, however, forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. Never giving him another thought. Wow. Just when you think things are getting better. Things can't get any worse than this. Things got really worse. Just like how some of you would have felt last week, right? You thought maybe this week things will get better. And then you just got hit upon you with a 21-day lockdown. Just when you thought things will get better, things only got worse. This time, he thought there is some, some glimmer of hope through cupbearer and the only the one opportunity that Joseph has been waiting for hoping that he would come out of this prison but the chief cupbearer completely forgot absolutely forgot not even giving another thought uh, to Joseph I mean he couldn't be any further away from his dream you know Joseph where he started off and where he's ended up now doesn't seem like anywhere closer both uh, his situation right now is really far away from his dream. Maybe some of you are like that in that situation. You know, just you're just waiting for an opportunity, an opportunity to see your dream to come to fulfillment. And maybe you thought this season your opportunity is going to open up. This season uh, you're going to get your dream fulfilled, uh, and then suddenly something hit. A coronavirus hit. Hit your job, hit your home, hit your workplace, hit, hit your country, you know, and you're now, you, you just thought you're getting your opportunity and it's just gone away from you. I want you to know this. 
even though the cup bearer forgot god didn't forget joseph even though people forget you god won't forget you that much you remember god has not forgotten joseph so he's looking for an opportunity an opportunity to get back to his home his dream to come to true um that's a goal you know i'm sure joseph just wanted to get back home is but it it just is is just got more farther away uh, from his dream that's how chapter 41 starts when you see joseph's life you would see this that just when things start getting better they get worse just when you think things are going to happen um they don't happen but here is something that i've realized through joseph's life and that's what we're going to read in chapter 41 in a moment from now over and over again in joseph's life what he thinks needs to be done isn't going to happen what we normally want to happen don't happen usually in our lives but then whatever happens in joseph's life is a is is totally unexpected and a surprise thing sometimes well many times in our life especially for those of us who believe in Christ that's how life is going to look like what we think should happen don't doesn't really happen but what does happen totally uh, catches us off guard it's totally unexpected and it's an interesting thing you see that is what i want to talk to you today about an opportunity an opportunity that only god can bring an opportunity that is so unexpected that you never thought this is how um your life is going to turn out to be i never thought this is how we would do services you know not in my wildest dream i know we will do our services and i know our services go online but i never thought we would actually become a totally online service in this period totally unexpected so sometimes life hits you like that totally unexpected i want to talk about those opportunities because those totally unexpected things that happen in your life could be the best opportunity that you will ever get in your life so here is the big idea for you some of the best opportunities in our life happen totally unexpected some of the best opportunities in our lives happen totally unexpected remember that think about it it could be possible the lockdown in your home is your best opportunity could be possible the lockdown is the best opportunity for capstone to grow as a church you know for us as a church to grow so let's make use of this opportunity well that's the point unexpected opportunity you don't you just don't see them coming you have this is not what what we have planned this is not what we have planned it's uh, um it, we would not even, we, we didn't even think of that but it just shows up when it shows up so unexpected it's important for us to make use of them it's in these unexpected opportunities god is at work in our dream god is at work in your dream like you have ever, i have you ever felt this like you know so many times in our life the bend in the in the road turns the opposite way from what you intended to be you want to go on to the right or maybe left whatever but then the bend in the road curves into a different bend a different side and then you have to take that road even though you want you thought this is how the road should go but you take this road but the by, by the time you reach the destination and you turn back and look at the you know the things that had happened in the destination that you ended up may actually turn out to be the best thing that happened to you who knows this thing can actually be the best thing that happened to our church as capstone never know um i i know i i, I you know i'm not the only one who feels like that um an expected um um turns in our life um experienced in our lives um and they turn out to be good i i don't know how good this is going to turn out to be but i'm definitely sure if god allowed this this is going to turn out to be a really good one through a series of unexpected opportunities some of you ended up in the job that you never thought you would have if you thought it's not possible for you to have a job like that but you have a job like that you ended up marrying someone you who wasn't on your list you know you never put her on your list or him on your list but you ended up marrying them or you moved to hyderabad and you now love this city i hope you love this city uh, and uh, you know it's so good that i'm so glad you're here actually uh, in in our city it's 
you know sometimes even bad stuff too through a disease through a through a loss you met someone you you found something your family became closer like how it's happening right now through this coronavirus our families get to spend more time together i'm sure a lot of you husbands and wives are working out your differences becoming by becoming better communication you know by communicating with each other maybe this is an opportunity for god that god has given to you both to work out the differences learn to communicate together learn to pray together and this would turn out to be something that would heal your marriage heal your children heal your family and probably make you a person who would bring healing to the world sometimes the best opportunities are so unexpected they lead us closer to god closer to his dream for our lives and that's what you see in jesus life so i want to talk about five things today this evening i'm uh, sorry this morning uh with you on how these and what is so unexpected about these opportunities that god brings into our lives all right so genesis chapter 41 uh verses 1 on was so i'm going to try and you know cover the whole a whole chapter so i'm not reading the whole chapter i'm just going to read a few verses um in in um, in this chapter chapter 1 chapter 41 verses 1 to 13 two full years later joseph is waiting and two years have passed chief bearer completely forgot about him chief cup bearer completely forgot about joseph pharaoh dreamed that he was standing on the bank of nile river so he has a dream in his dream he saw a fat healthy cows come up out of the river and begin to gra- began grazing in the marsh grass then he saw seven more ca- cows come up from behind the nile and but these are scrawny and thin uh, these cows stood beside the fat cows on the river bank then the scrawny thin cows ate the seven healthy fat cows at this point of the dream pharaoh woke up because it's such a sudden and unexpected thing but he fell asleep again he fell asleep again then had a second dream this time he saw seven heads of grain plump beautiful growing on a single stalk then seven more heads of grain appeared but these were shriveled and withered by east wind and these thin heads swallowed up the seven plump well formed heads then pharaoh woke up again and realized it was a dream so the next morning pharaoh was very disturbed by these dreams so he called for magi- magicians and wise men of the egypt when pharaoh told them his dreams not one of them could tell what they meant finally the king's chief cup bearer finally he remembered and spoke up today i have been reminded of my failure he said he told to pharaoh some time ago you were angry with the chief baker and me and you imprisoned us in the palace of captain of the guard one night the chief baker and i each had a dream and each dream had its own meaning there was a young hebrew man among us with us in the prison who was also a slave of captain of the guard We told him our dreams and he told us what each of our dreams meant and everything happened just as he predicted. I was restored to my position as chief cupbearer and the chief baker was ex- executed and imp- impaled on a pole. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph at once. Let me pause there. Pharaoh sent for Joseph at once. Two years prior to that I don't know how long he is in the prison. uh from the day he gave the explanation to chief cup bearer and the, his hope came back two years after he had the little glimmer of hope that he will be released two years of waiting period and then he gets released at once because of a dream that pharaoh gets here is here are five things that are totally expected unexpected about god's dreams number one god uses anyone well for in in my words unbelievers to create opportunities for you you know we usually expect god to create opportunities for those who love god who know god who are believers who may understand our our uh, you know our story and our uh, our story and our dreams but sometimes god creates opportunities using unbelievers who using those who do not know him to create opportunities for you and that's exactly what happened in this story of stories uh, jo- jo- i want you to remember this god's dreams are not limited only to believers sometimes god speaks to unbelievers and that's what he did with pharaoh he spoke to pharaoh 
through his dream pharaoh's dream about the future of egypt pharaoh doesn't know that but he had a dream it was a dream that came from god not from something else it was not his own imagination it was a dream a vision of his country from god and as pharaoh received it from god it taught me a very important lesson it could be possible that god can speak to an unbeliever about what he has in store for our uh, for our future and using that unbeliever to c- c- create an opportunity for you to see your dream to come to fulfillment so don't don't just give up the companies that you work for could actually be carrying god's vision you know you never know that you may see them as secular companies you may see them from a totally different perspective it could be possible that the same very companies that you're working for and you think they're secular and they don't have nothing to do with christ it could be possible that they are actually doing god's work in this world and god is using you by placing you there to work there he's actually bringing that vision to come into fulfillment so pharaoh has a dream pharaoh needs somebody who understands those dreams and come to fulfillment he brings joseph into the picture nebuchadnezzar had a dream in the book of daniel you would read um, the story of nebuchadnezzar the king nebuchadnezzar the um, the king of babylon who had a dream who had a dream about future you know the dream that nebuchadnezzar got was a dream of end times you know actually the things that are going to come now in the future those are the dreams that he had god gave um the future of this world dream about the future of this world to a man who's totally against god and brought daniel into the picture to interpret those dreams see god uses unbelievers in order to create opportunities for us don't forget that abdul kalam ji our former prime minister who uh, sorry from a president of india is is a is a wonderful man if you have ever read his books you would see a visionary a visionary who speaks like a believer he may not have the same faith like we have he may believe in something else but man when i began to read his books a book like ignited minds a target 3 billion uh, some of the things that dr abdul kalam writes are are brilliant out of the world they have to come from god you know he talks about how, uh, you know one thing that we should have said uh, as believers in christ that he said that this is what he says in in opening of his book uh, sorry ending of his book in a in a in a chapter called um, in a um, in a pass uh, you know passage called song of youth he opens that song of youth like this as a young citizen of india armed with technology and love for this nation i realize small aim is a crime I mean these are words supposed to be spoken by us believers of the word of god but a man who's who who doesn't hold the same faith is actually speaking the words that we are supposed to speak god's words we can't think small we can't dream small it's a crime you know uh, if i have if i as a true indian as a true believer of christ i must dream bigger for better things i mean the book both the books ignited minds a target 3 billion um, are some one, two of the best books i've ever written uh, uh, read in my life written by our um, uh, abdul kalam ji this is what he says in um, f- um, abdul kalam this is my belief that through difficulties and problems god gives us opportunities to grow i mean these are the words of the bible through difficulties and circumstances difficulties and circumstances god gives us opportunities to grow so when your hopes and dreams and goals are dashed search among the wreckage you may find a golden opportunity hidden in those ruins i mean these words could never have been truer uh, than to our present situation could be possible that there is a hidden opportunity in coronavirus you know that god can actually bring something out of this in order to create an opportunity for you so don't limit your view of god's sovereignty don't limit your you know your life with a with a small view of the sovereignty of god god is not just in control he is in control of everything he is in control of everybody believers non believers presidents prime ministers he is in control of everybody 
and irrespective of their faith background irrespective of their religious background god is still going to use them to create opportunities for you so here is an opportunity for you waiting to be discovered just because it is given by somebody who doesn't believe in god you may be ignoring it you know and you may be not grabbing it so don't limit your view of god's sovereignty in bringing you opportunities all right that's number one that's the unexpected thing about opportunities that god brings god you god uses uh any one unbelievers to create an opportunity for number two god uses relationships to bring opportunities for you this is something that is very important it's a crucial thing who remembered joseph it was a cup bearer if joseph had not met cup bearer in the prisoner prison and developed a relationship with him in the prison helped the uh, the cup bearer in the prison joseph would never have gotten this opportunity to stand in front of pharaoh sometimes we ignore good relationships relationship building just because we are so focused on the problems that we are in at that point of time joseph could have sulked about what god is doing to him and sitting in the prison he would have thought i mean i believe in god and i still in the prison i i'm in this lockdown i don't know why i am struggling like this i shouldn't have been but in that period he developed relationships even though the chief cup bearer actually forgot about him for 2 years um when he remembered that was the time joseph's opportunity got opened you see sometimes god uses forgetful cup bearers to remember something at the perfect time so you may have a forgetful cup bearer in your life but god will remind him of you at the perfect time like when he's standing in front of pharaoh sometimes god even uses the stupidity of someone in your life so that the timing of the things work out for you for your own dream in fact sometimes god uses our own stupidity um to to re, you know to create an opportunity for us but my point is very simple god uses relationships to create opportunities that's why relationships are very important build your network with people irrespective of who they are be kind to them compassionate to them uh, offer your best help to them irrespective of who they are what they believe in who knows it will come back to you in the right way at the right time we tend to look at here now in in the prison uh, in the relationships r- rather than what could be down the line that's why jesus wants us to love deeply you know now thou love deeply now so that you may see the blessing at the end because at the end of the day we'll all be spending together forever in eternity so we might as well start loving people now developing a relationship with them now god puts us in relationship with people who will then later create an opportunity for us to bring healing to the world maybe the opportunity that uh, the person is the person that you just met recently during this lockdown or the person you ran into or your children the children who are uh, with whom they are playing cricket with or or the person who delivers your email your your mail or your, you know your food or or the person who is li- living next door who knows maybe the opportunity is the team over which you are put you have been put the in charge of or the team with which you need to work or in the team that you need to work with right now on this new project think about this i think that there is a there is rarely a random acquaintance there is nothing called random acquaintance in our life i don't think god has a random thing happening in our lives everything is perfectly planned people are perfectly planned what if i want you to think about this what if god gives you an ability to see things like he does for example you know if god gives you this ability to begin to recognize people who are going to play a very important role in your life in the future um like in matrix you know um that that person you know matrix is is a movie tri- um, trilogy um in which the you know the, the guy in the matrix has the green hue all over him 
yeah what if god gives you this ability to look at um the person who's going to make a difference in your life with a green hue around him some kind of heavenly glow around him how would you treat that person if you know that this person in the future is going to play a very important role in my life man the way you deal with them the way you talk to him the way you respect him the way you meet their needs at this time would be totally different because you know at some point this person is going to do something in your life right if god gave you that ability imagine that you would treat them differently um what if god gave you the ability to see well in fact god expects us to see every person in their face christ if you can understand what i just told you you will understand the importance of relationships in your life so pharaoh sent um for joseph at once i love that when i started looking at that one thing the change happened because of one relationship he developed in the prison that means people we meet are not by chance are not there by chance there's nothing called coincidence in our life every person is perfectly placed at the perfect time to meet us it may not make sense right now but it makes sense to god that's all you need to remember so pharaoh sent for joseph at once and he was quickly quickly brought out of the prison after he was shaved and changed his clothes he went and stood before pharaoh in a matter of hours joseph's life changed because of one relationship he built well don't limit your view of the role that people play um in fulfilling god given purpose for your life don't limit that view so what's so sudden about god given opportunity god uses non believers unbelievers to create opportunities for you god uses relationships to to bring opportunities to you number 3 god uses small opportunities to prepare you for bigger opportunities you need to remember this that the opportunities that you may be facing right now look small limited little but little opportunities prepare you for better opportunities little opportunities prepare you for greater opportunities do you think potiphar's house prepared joseph for this moment the moment to stand in front of pharaoh in the prison how about the prison think about it don't you think these experiences that he had in the potiphar's house and in the prison or maybe in the pit all of them helped joseph through different seasons a learning opportunity is so, when joseph was there potiphar didn't have to worry same thing with uh, the prison warden and joseph was there with joseph there the warden didn't worry about anything here is something that i realized that joseph right from the beginning had the ability to be a leader and a manager that's probably why his own father put him in charge over his brothers Now I wonder what would have happened if Joseph was brought in front of Pharaoh when he was 17 years old. Not now, but when he was 17 years old. When he was the way when he was wearing the robe, you know, the beautiful robe that dad gave him. I'm not so sure that it would have gone this well for Joseph. You see, at that time Joseph was a dreamer, he had a good dream, great dream, but he didn't have character. A character that can help this dream to become a blessing to the world around him joseph wasn't ready you aren't ready right now yes your dream is big yes you are what you dream right now is really a good dream it is it is a god given dream but maybe you are not ready at this point of time maybe you need to grow in your character um maybe you need to learn to operate in the gifts that god can god is giving you maybe you need to uh, start serving well as in little things small things so that you begin to see god working in you through you and giving success in everything that you do so that you then become more and more dependent on god see every little opportunity that joseph got all through his journey is an opportunity that he made use of well and then god began to give him greater opportunities think about it this way 
uh, as well. This, this is a Hebrew boy, young boy. He doesn't know anything about Hebrew, uh, Egyptian culture. The language, the economy, um, you know, anything. Anything about that culture, he doesn't know. This is a nomadic Hebrew boy. How, do you, how does he get to know the culture, the new culture? How does he get to know to, be, um, to make use of the opportunity well in order to save Egypt? By, by starting at the top? No. A Hebrew boy, if he was placed to be the in charge of a country, that is, that has a different culture, different language, different customs, he wouldn't have messed up. But the best place for him to start learning that was to start low, at the servant level. And as he started serving well, he started learning a new language, new culture, new way of life, new way of economy, new everything new, you know, the Egyptian culture. He was best prepared for a foreign job starting at the low place as a foreign slave. But then God was with him all the way. God had to get Joseph ready in order to begin to use Joseph. Um for this job, this bigger job. There is, a, there is not a single season in Joseph's life where God wasn't. There is no single season in your life where God is not with you. Every season of your life, God is with you, preparing you for better opportunities, bigger opportunities. You see, there is not a single season of life that doesn't prepare, that doesn't prepare us for the next one. It's the same for everyone in this world. At so many seasons when we so many times in our life when we go through tough seasons like this, we wish we would go through them as fast as we can, you know. We know the opportunity we want, but we um, we want it quickly. I wonder what if this is an, the this is the unexpected way, this lockdown is the unexpected way that God is actually preparing us for an opportunity that would come tomorrow. A bigger opportunity. Maybe this is the time God is getting you ready for the next one. It's tough, I know. Like our Prime Minister said, 21 days are going to be long. But maybe this is the season you need to get ready for the next one. What you're doing today could be something that God is preparing you for the next. Some of you thinking, how, how could I... I mean, how could the job that I have or the role that I have have any purpose? How could this season have any purpose? This Corona season has any purpose? It looks like more like a dead end, like a doom rather than anything. Next, I want you to know God is preparing us for a new season. Give this season all you got, the best you got. At the very least, if nothing happens after this, at the very least, you would see, you would get an opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus, give glory to Christ. You know, that's a better thing. I know some of you are thinking, I'm in a role, I'm old, I'm in a role that I'm going to retire in. I, I, I'm, I'm the boss of my company. Maybe you, you do. You do have, own a business. How could I possibly, what could I possibly be getting ready for? I've already got what I want. What if God wasn't through with you? What if there are still areas in your life that needs to get right, that needs to be shaped up so that He will prepare you for the next season? I want you to know that season is coming. The next season is coming. And this season, this season right now is preparing you for that season. Get ready, get prepared. Verses 15. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream last night and no one here can tell me what it means. But I've heard that you, when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. It is beyond my power to do this, Joseph said. I mean, look at that. Joseph started off as a person who began to think about his dreams and he thought he's going to be awesome to come to a place where he understood that dreams are all about God. So he begins to say, well, I don't have the power, but God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. So um, let, me, uh, uh, let me just give you this heads up. Through the opportunities, little opportunities that God creates for you, He changes you, prepares you better, brings you to this moment of total humility, dependability on God, 
where you then are ready now for a bigger opportunity don't limit your view of the opportunities based on their size number 4 this is the fourth one fourth and fifth next few minutes we'll finish this listen god uses others problems as your opportunities god uses others opportunities our this problems as your opportunities we've been talking about some of the best opportunities you know what are the worst opportunities some of you have, have gone through you know the ones that are missed right the ones that you thought would be the best and you missed them some of the best opportunities in our life present themselves as a problem hmm. i mean this state can, statement could never be more true than this right now that's why they get missed you know because we see them as a problem rather than an opportunity farah got a problem a big one and joseph knows that um joseph knows what he does with people and um um what state he is in uh, and joseph knows that this man is 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 an absolute ruler of the world and if he is unhappy everything goes unhappy and but that became an opportunity for joseph to do something right now you know pharaoh's big problem is joseph's great opportunity somebody else's bigger problem is your great opportunity if you see a problem great god is preparing you um presenting you the opportunity in that way you know uh, so but you know god doesn't just see a problem he sees an opportunity that you could make use of and move towards the dream that he gave you let's be people who say jesus lead me to see differently guide me to see differently teach me to see differently allow me to see differently um allow me to point everything towards you um the solution so joseph begins to interpret and that's what you would see over the next few verses he began to respond to pharaoh's dreams and began to tell him what god is about to do to pharaoh and he says god told pharaoh he's telling pharaoh pharaoh god told you about what he's going to do in advance and this is what is going to happen in our country you're going to have seven full years of you know harvest great harvest great income and seven years of great famine better prepare now for this famine that is going to come and they interpreted he created an opportunity and then he goes on to say i know you see a problem but i want you to know that god gave you this dream so that you can be prepared uh, beforehand it's a great opportunity for you to save your own country so pharaoh said hey who could better be the guy who can do this job than you so this is our verses 42 ends pharaoh said to joseph i hereby put you in charge of entire land of egypt now egypt is not just a country at that time it's a kingdom it's an empire it was the world ruling empire pharaoh literally was the world ruler at that point of time and so joseph became the in charge of entire land of egypt where was this little boy who was thrown into a pit sold into slavery somehow managed to rise up into the head of a small household has now become the world ruler just because he knew god is at work all the time so listen don't limit your don't limit don't view your role in god's dream as a small one Don't limit your view of your role in God's dream for this world. You got a much bigger role than what you think you have. Number 1, number 5, the last one. Here is the, God uses your faithfulness to bring more opportunities. Remember that. When God gives you an opportunity, however small, however big it is, it's your faithfulness that counts to God. Obedience, faithfulness is key. Faithfulness to God is key. One of the ways we see God moved through Joseph out of the center of his life. You know, Joseph moved out of the center of his life. And then allowed God to become the center of his life. He was obedient. He was faithful. It's no longer about him. He doesn't talk about him. He talks always about God. It's not about getting a leverage, power or manipulation. It's about faithfulness and obedience. Joseph learned to be faithful and obedient. Whenever God gave him an opportunity, Joseph did it. everything the best to make sure god is glorified through this your opportunities that god gives you are your opportunities 
to show God your faithfulness through your obedience. Through these seasons of difficulty, small opportunities, be faithful. Show your faith in this season. Not just this season, but all through your life. Don't limit your faith to one season of your life. That's my point. You see, the greatest peace of your dreams is coming true. 2020 right now may look like nightmarish at this point of time. But it could be the year where your dreams would come true. If you simply obey Him through this season now. This moment, this moment. This could be a moment that God is actually turning into a blessing. Who knows? Who knows? You just have to say Amen. You just have to say Amen and keep following it. Keep obeying. Here is step number five. Make most of every opportunity that God gives you. In this world, right now, God needs faithful people obediently following His word. This is what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like, but like those who are wise. Who are wise? Those who make most of every opportunity. Make most of every opportunity. Did you see this? That God sees your brokenness as an opportunity rather than as a problem. Sure, it's a big problem. Sin is always in it. Causes death. But he doesn't stop there, you know. He doesn't stop at where we are sinners. But he changes that. Creates an opportunity for you to become a person through, uh, through sorting out your mess. For you to become a person who becomes a healing to the people around him. Hey, listen. This season is your opportunity. And if God wants you to make use of it well, make use of it well. As we close this service, no matter what you're going through, what you're feeling through at this point of time, in your heart, I want you to understand that it can turn out to be a blessing for you. I want you to take this moment to close your eyes and ask God to help you to see the way God sees your life, sees everything. Would you do that? Good. Close your eyes all across this place, all across your home. Um, bring your children together and just hold their hands. Good. And as you do that, tell God, God, this season I'll be faithful. This is the toughest season of my life, but I'll be faithful. I'll make use of this opportunity well. Would you turn this into a blessing? Not just for me, but to my family and to the neighbors and to the whole world. Would you do that? All right. Let me take this moment to pray with you. Father, we thank you, God, for this great opportunity that you gave us to connect like this and to pray together to receive your word. And I pray that, God, as we recognize this, this season as your opportunity, the one that you gave us, in order to be faithful through this season, so that a season that is totally unexpected would come next. If we have to make use of that opportunity, we need to make use of this opportunity, this season well. So help us God. It may look little, it may look difficult, it may look broken, it may look frightening, but through this season, help us to be faithful, obedient. Thank you for teaching us so much through Joseph's life. Help us to make most of every opportunity that we give, we get through you. Thank you for those who joined us online today, all across um, Telangana, all across the Hyderabad city, and across the world, and different places of our country and across the world. What they have heard today may it make a difference in their lives. May they see God at work in their lives right now in this season. Thank you, Jesus, for being a God who is always in control. Bless you, God. 
the coming week we commit it into your hands we pray for all the things that we need to do throughout this week help us to get our daily needs help us to uh, do our jobs well um, give our best in everything that we have stay at home grow closer to you uh, meditate on your word develop relationships uh, through this season god and through the time that you've granted us as a church we continue to pray to you we continue to look to you you are still in charge of everything you we know that our church the church is across the world the church is yours and you are in control of that and god whatever comes later uh, we know that you are still faithful you are always good and it will always be the best so we look forward to you god if christ tarries god help us to meet again next week um and uh, worship together um as we as we uh, as as one family your body Bless you Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Elizen thank you for joining us today online. All right next Sunday we have a communion service. So the, here is what I want you to do. Um um during this week whenever you get an opportunity just buy a piece of bread um that would be enough for your entire family and also a small um a packet of grape juice if possible or a wine. Um gather it together stay at home um uh, next sunday when we gather together worship uh we will break the bread and partake in communion together you know it will be one interesting way of partaking in communion uh never done um uh, but this would be a interesting way of doing communion together all right so in your own homes as a family together you will partake in communion uh, the heads of the family would break the bread and then um you know as a family you can partake together in bread um next sunday we will do this virtually and it will be fun you know i'm just looking forward to that all right let's do the lord's prayer together and instead of me giving blessing i'm going to ask our worship leader brother selvin to sing a song of blessing over you um of his grace upon your life would you do that all right so let's do the lord's prayer together our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day a daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen 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 let's sing this song together and receive the blessing as um with the selvin sings that song for us Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace we declare that amen 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 Ah uh...
bless you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you again next Sunday.